Spoon of consciousness. Let's raise our frequency. Welcome to the Spoon of Consciousness podcast. My guest today is Kerry, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. My name is Kerry Garner Fenta. Um, and if you are tuning in from anywhere in the States, you would probably pronounce my surname as Venta. And I, I joke that I'm Mrs. Venta. I, I'm, people often come and vent to me um, <laughs> nowadays about all sorts of things. So. I am a certified joy of business facilitator and access consciousness facilitator. I coach creative entrepreneurs and mentor them uh, to have more joy in their business and their lives. And I'm really excited to be here. So thanks for having me. Thank you so much for joining us, Kerry. And um, the first question I have for you is what, so I have seen a lot of creatives trying to okay let's take the the classic stereotype for example someone is amazing at drawing either with comic books or paintings and stuff but they can't sell their work um and they and they want to be the artist that can do it all um do you think that it's necessary for them to team up with someone who can sell their work for them or would you take it on as a challenge to say well let's work on your ability to sell that's such a great question um and the, the thing that I've found in my own experience and working with, you know, lots of different creative entrepreneurs and business leaders um, is really that the most valuable tool I can give them is to really be in the question around that and to ask what would create greater. So there is, there are, you know, because, and I say that for two reasons. One reason is that oftentimes uh, people haven't always acknowledged their capacities or what they're already being. And when they're not acknowledging what they're already being, they can't actually perceive it and they become the effect of it. So when people aren't acknowledging, like sometimes creative um, you know, artists or creative entrepreneurs are, are really great at their craft, um, but they are also great at other things that they haven't necessarily acknowledged that they're great at so that's that's one thing is like just just to really be in the question of like if i choose to engage in these activities what will that create and to get a sense of the energy of that and if it sounds fun and if it's something that like actually would be a contribution then i would say go for it because especially when people are starting out in business like we have to wear a lot of hats right like you just it's a it's just a, a kind of a thing that happens. And sometimes when you allow yourself to actually have the awareness of what will create greater versus having the answer or having the conclusion like, oh, well, I'm just an artist, therefore I won't be good at selling or I'm just an artist, therefore I won't be good at the business. If you're not operating from the conclusion and you get people to like start asking questions, well, what would it create if I did that? Um, and you follow the awareness instead, that often um, can really be helpful. The second reason I say that asking questions about that is, is helpful is because um, when people are, you know, we've been, the, this reality kind of perpetuates the invitation, or not even, it's not even an invitation, it's just like perpetuates the, the process of learning that which uh, will create a greater career for you, not necessarily what's aligned with what you would love to do. So what happens is people end up learning things that they are good at or that they should do um, versus what they really would love to do. And mm -hmm. so it's really about starting to ask those questions like, well, you know, did you actually love connecting with people and selling and, you know, engaging with people, but you were told that you were so good at art that you shouldn't actually connect with people and like be in marketing or sales. Um, so it, it's like, or did you learn that you should only stick to um, the, the marketing and the sales and, you know, some more concrete, more mainstream career and forget about the art, right? And so then it's like you've been forced into one side or the other. So what I find is typically people, most the majority of people are learning things or are good at things that are not necessarily aligned with what they love to do. Um, and so we've got to do a little bit of investigating and exploring bef bef before you can just say like, this is the answer. This is the best way forward. It depends on every single person. 
Yeah, definitely. And and seeing seeing um the way that think the platforms are growing now like social platforms um basically the internet has allowed us now to have skills and then present them to the world and then let the market decide. So kind of cutting out that middleman of being ha- like having to be able to sell. But then then in in that you know great thing that has advanced from technology there's a lot of problems. Um not okay not problems but there's a lot of challenges the first one and main one for me seeing on on it is there's a lot of competition let's take music producers for example there's a billion look, i make music myself i'm not by any means ready to start selling it but i see that like everyone can do it these days what what would a creative entrepreneur be able to do to separate themselves from the rest of the herd um and obviously having their own unique style and stuff that's great but in terms of like actually making making a business out of it so i would say that as cliche as it sounds um it's really about just being you and following what's going to be fun and joyful for you right so um when i started teaching the tools of joy of business and access consciousness and incorporated them, them into my practice my coaching practice my facilitation and training what it allowed people to recognize is that the more that they just follow what's true for them and what their light is like what what lights them up and what is inspiring to them uh the less they need to be motivated by external sources so there's a massive difference between inspiration and motivation inspiration is really when you are following what's true and fun and light for you and motivation is when you're following what everyone else is telling you to do and you need them to motivate you right you need these external sources to motivate you and that's way less sustainable when you're when you're when you need to be motivated by external sources so you know when you just said to me like i'm by no means good enough to start selling my music or ready to sell it like i would i would pose the invitation back to you like what if you were and like what would it create if you just like threw it out there and said hey guys like you know it's 2 dollars or 2 euros 5 pounds like whatever like is fun for you what if it was like 100 You know, would you be willing to do what's actually fun for you versus what you've already decided and judged and concluded you can do or can't do or have to be or ought to be first, right? So, like when people get out of the linearity, like the step by step, like I need to be experienced first before I can do this or have this many things under my belt, blah blah blah, blah and you just follow what, like, what would be fun, like what would, and if I chose this. what would it create now and in my future that's a real key question cuz when you get the energy like maybe you won't sell anything you know in the first few weeks or months or days or whatever but what is just that choice going to actually create in your future and that's the key is that sometimes we think of profitability as only like an income stream but actually profitability is about expanding your life not just your wallet right and having knowing that you have infinite choice in any moment and when you have infinite choice and you follow the choices and choose the choices that are going to create greater um for you and what's true for you it starts to just create this future that's very expansive um and and it's about just it's about your life not just your business cuz you know if you've got you wake up in the morning and you have blood running through your veins you are in business so it's like what kind of business do you want to be in Mm. So th- this this for me I I love the the energy you have behind it and I'm definitely on board with that removing the limitations and not you know confining yourself to the box of well someone did it like this so I have to follow that <clears throat> I think following that excitement that's within us definitely that's that's a great idea the 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 problem I feel personally with creative stuff is um I would prefer to hone the skills for a certain period of time and then when i feel ready do something but even in uh, adopting that approach we can sometimes come into like the problem with p- perfectionism or waiting too long until it's too good what like i'm i'm sure you must come across a <laughs> creative entrepreneurs who are like that where do you think that's coming from So I would say it's exactly where you just said it comes from it comes from the need to be perfect have all your ducks in a row have all the green lights right green before you actually leave your house so to speak so you know what if it wasn't perfect and what if you chose it anyway and if there's any type because choice is what actually creates not awareness not perfection not readiness not 
you know, like this is, this is ready to be, um, not, not even practice. So sure. If you, but I don't want to get, I don't want people to misidentify, misidentify this. That's also not to say that like, if you choose to practice a little bit more and hone it, if you get the sense that that choice is going to create greater, by all means, choose that, right? But don't, don't wait to create and don't wait to choose. Because if you wait to choose to actually like choose the choice that's going to create something greater, it, it, that's what sticks you and that's what limits people and that's what actually like throws them into this analysis paralysis or this like lie that there is something like there's a reason and a justification that they buy into that I, I'm not doing it. I'm not selling my music because right reason and justification. I haven't practiced enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not known enough, blah, 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 blah. So as long as you're not using reasons and justifications to actually, um, to, to stop your choices, then, then follow what's true for you. Follow what's light. If practicing and getting it ready is, is what's light, then keep practicing until it's like, okay, now is the time. Hmm. So what, um, you know, there's people like, I'm sure you know Gary V, who um, he basically talks about work, putting in the work, honing the, cro- honing the skills, but also not shying away from... Um, putting yourself out there, you know, you make you like he told uh, one of the producers put one song out every single day and they, someone couldn't match that work rate. So they did one a week and then they just skyrocketed and, and it all took off. And then so many people jumped on that ideology of, OK, let's just work. That's 100 percent. I agree with that. That's, um, you know, I adopt that for my own work, whether it's the blog, books, music, whatever it is. The, this begs the question of strategy, like the strategy that I've seen that is works with me the most is um, building up a huge library of work and then filtering through deciding what to put out and then alongside doing that building a awareness around your thing whether that's vlogging like putting video blogs out or a blog written one and then leveraging the awareness that you've built against what you're trying to sell is is that basically like one of the better strategies or do you, have you come across any other ones so i would always start to answer that with if it works for you keep choosing it if it's not working for you acknowledge that and then start to say okay well what else can i choose because the thing that 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 actually deteriorates creative flow the most is judgment and decision and conclusion and computation computation meaning like trying to figure it out on your own and trying to like come up with the answer the more people so if you if you decide that is the best strategy and you come to that conclusion you'll never actually see what else is possible and what else could be a contribution to your, your life and your business. And so that's the first thing. The second thing is that, you know, the strategy that you've just described, um, is that actually allowing you to follow the energy in the moment, right? Like if you're focusing on building up content so that you could then kind of reverse engineer it or repurpose it at a later point, is that allowing you to be as present with what is in the moment as you would like it to be? If it is, great. And if it's not, then it's like, okay, well, how else could I actually, you know, because the thing is, is we as creative entrepreneurs will we'll get downloads all the time, right? Like, I, I don't know about you, but I have like a little book that I'm constantly, I have my notes on my phone. Um, and so there's, there's absolutely... Um, it's absolutely a great idea to cont- you know to capture all of that, but I would say that for those people out there that are like trying to, you know, like so, so for example, a strategy that's often encouraged that's similar to this is like batch writing, right? Like batch emails or batch blogging or batch blogging. But the thing with that is, you know, it doesn't give you the it doesn't give you access to the flow of energy and to what's actually relevant and happening for people in the moment. And so as long again, as long again, as long as you're not getting caught up in that's the only way, like I'm deciding that this is what I need to do now. Because choice and decision are very different. Like if you make a decision, it cuts off 
all other possibilities. Whereas a choice is like good for 10 seconds. So cool, I'm gonna choose the strategy, I'm gonna batch for this day, I'm gonna batch for this week, I'm gonna batch for this month or this year. And if that if it's if it's not giving you what you would actually like, then it's about ch changing your choice and just keep choosing something that actually will create something greater. Um, and, and just being in that constant question of like, okay, if I choose to do it this way, what's that going to create? So as long as you're in the question of your strategies and you're asking what they will contribute to you and your business, then you'll actually get the awareness of what they will. Because the thing with decisions and judgments and conclusions is that people often ask questions based on that conclusion or that decision that they've already made. So they're like, oh, if I do the strategy, will I get this result that I have already decided is the result that I need and will, and will want? And that, from like a quantum physics point of view, is only focusing on like the particles and the forms rather than like accessing the wave, right? The wave of like infinite possibilities. And so if you're only asking questions based on a decision and a result and a particular outcome, you're actually only engaging with the, the particle and there are infinite particles, so to speak, that could play and create and contribute to your life and your business. And as a creative entrepreneur, that's actually when you get into that flow, is not to be bound by structures and by you know, strategies that, that limit, but actually systems that you can change and tweak and evolve and that could you know, continue to contribute to you and what you're wanting to create. Does that make sense? I feel like I'm giving you very long-winded spiels. No, I, I love it. And and your experience in this is like coming out a lot. So I'm I'm definitely absorbing as much as I can. Um and I'll definitely be watching this back a few times when when I find myself in doubt. Um I you know, after what you said, the first thing that comes to mind for me is it's great to work on inspiration when it feels right and you can write like 7,000 words and it's like, yes, I've got the power, I feel it, it's amazing. But then that like for me, that's okay if I want to keep it as a hobby or if I've got like a long-term deadline for this thing. Like um, maybe I've got a blog post that needs to be written for two weeks' time. And look, I'm terrible with deadlines. I usually leave it until a few days before and then just start and and it comes out within a couple of hours which is cool um that's probably one of the ways that i work but then when it comes to actually doing things for money i don't know like it feels a bit different it feels as though and i get i i guess this is subjective for everyone right everyone's going to be different but you know doing something daily so let's say for example you got twelve thousand words to write in a month and you try and do uh, 1500 words uh, in a couple of days or whatever is is that systematic approach the same thing as you saying like it's approaching it too l linearly so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you that like when you when you were talking about how you do work you're like that's probably a way i work which is like leaving it to the last minute and then might be like ah! versus the systematic approach that you then started to talk about needing to do like what's the difference in the energy just for you talking about it the difference is like with the when when I go by like right at the last minute um, and I've done this so many times I wrote my university dissertation in three days and um, it just it destroyed me like in 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 like my mind I was like suffocating but when I do it for pleasurable stuff sorry Did it really suffocate you in or was it so exciting that you couldn't like you wanted to explode with excitement that you could do it and get it done and like this is how you operate if you really were to acknowledge what's true for you well it, i don't i guess like uh i was trying to numb a lot of that because i used to smoke a lot of weed and i was just like just trying to smoke as much as possible and type as much as possible in a really short space of time but i guess like that time was kind of different this like uh writing a, the blog post in a short space of time if i leave it to the last minute i definitely feel there's a sense of urgency which is great and it helps me to produce something but then on the other hand i always think well it wouldn't have been better if i wrote like 100 words a day and then by now it would have been done and i've done that before and it eases a lot of that tension okay so then there's there's what works for you if it eases a lot of that tension and that's what works for you that's what's true for you. So, mm. yeah. So, what if there was no right or wrong? What if there was yeah. no better or worse, right? That's the judgment. Like, 
judgment is not just like the judgment, like someone is going to come down and judge us, like, and you know, the wrath. Judgment is positive and negative, good and bad, right and wrong. If I, you know, if I say to you, you're a rock star, you're amazing, love your work, you know, whatever, like those are positive judgments that I'm throwing at you. And they're just as limiting as if I'm giving you the opposite end of the spectrum, the negative judgments, both perpetuate polarity and duality and keep you in this cycle. Where, like basically what happens is that each side of the charge of light, right? The positive, the negative charge, they, and this is the etymology of religion, like religion, the, the original root is to re-ligate. So it's like those charges then go on a, on a quest, which is why I like quest ions, questions, because questions help re-ligate re those charges back to their full quantum state, which is which creates light. Like light does not can't exist when unless the two charges have, have come together and merged. So literally, this like quest and and search for enlightenment is is literally about collapsing the wave function, collapsing the charge or judgment, and bringing you back to what's true and light for you, which doesn't have a point of view. There is no right, there is no wrong, there is no good, there is no bad, there is no better, there is no worse. And people in this reality are so addicted to charge, whether it's positive thinking, positive charge, support, right? And resisting the negative that they create these like massive, um, literally like bipol bipolarities that, and these ions have to like start spinning and, you know, to try and re-ligate. And if you're not asking the questions that help to collapse those charges, you'll just continue to spin and spin and spin and spin and spin and, spin and revolve, not evil. Mm. So, yeah. So it's like if you, so what if, and even in your questions, it's like, I'm so grateful that you're asking me all of these questions because it's like, you know, um, it, you, the questions are like, is this the right strategy? Right. And so it's like, what if it wasn't about the right strategy? Is it working for you? Yes, cool. And if it doesn't work for you tomorrow, would you be willing to change it? Yeah, that that's a, something different. That's a huge part of the creative stuff that I was really having a hard time with in, in the beginning. You know, I was listening to people like Gary, and I was producing a, a crap load of content in a really short space of time, and then I was getting burnt out. And then I was crying about it saying, well, if I don't carry on this, this work rate, I'm never going to get to this destination. And then I was having a conversation with someone and they said, what if tomorrow you've, you, your excitement for podcasts just gone? And I, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I felt it right in here. I was like, damn, that, that would be a shame. And he was like, yeah, but would you be willing to drop it if it no longer excited you? And I guess that's, that's like a huge thing to consider and and I thought about it for a minute I was like if I don't enjoy it the content's going to be terrible the people are not going to in like we're not going to enjoy the interaction and it's going to feel forced so I would rather take a break than put out crappy content and and no one be happy with it so I think that's like for me though I acknowledge it as like a comfort zone of well this is the strategy that I've picked and if I remove myself from it then I'm going into the unknown and that's scary and yeah, and so and so so I love this. So the, the thing about scary and fear is like what if fear was actually what we had misidentified and misapplied as excitement of the unknown? Hmm. As excitement of the unknown, right? Because it's like this and, and it is, it's 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 a space, it's chaos, it's unpredictability, it's out of control. You are not in control, there is no formula, there is no process. But that's the wave, that's the wave function of light, right? So it's like wait, light acts in two ways simultaneously. It's either a wave function or it's the particles and the charge. And so e in each moment you have the choice to like ride the wave of infinite possibilities and choice or like get stuck in the world of duality and polarity and like just keep spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning, trying to figure out what's right and, and avoid what's wrong. Yeah, I think that can... I you know, from my own journey, that whole battle of right and wrong can really cripple us in our execution. Like, 
look, I, I'll be honest with you, Kerry. I've written two books in a very short space of time. The third, there's supposed to be six in the series. I haven't even got into the fourth chapter of the third one because I'm crippled by the execution of, oh, but it needs to match up with this. And But then, like, having these conversations and, and having this awareness and asking these questions, it's like, well, why does it have to match up with that? Why can't we come back to it later on? Why can't we change those to match up with this? And then subsequently change. Why do you have to do one, two, three, four? Why can't you do six, three, five, one, two, and and bounce around? And since I adopted that approach, um, I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't finished the books, but like it's it did definitely makes approaching the creative project a lot more anxiety free and, and relieves a lot of that ill feeling towards it. So with that being said, like, do you have any tips for people who are wanting to take their creativity from a hobby to then a business? So I would say that the minute you, you make your, your hobby and what you love into a necessity, you're going to kill the creativity. So it's like, what if you actually valued your hobby and actually was like, what would it take to create to actually like generate some money from this? What would be fun for me to charge? You know, like, what do I love about like, just, and just to keep following the joy in business so that, because your hobby, your, your life is your business. You know, you, it's not like, so, so when people try and create separation, so the tip is like, don't create separation between your life, your business, your hobby. Like what if all of it was just contributing and generating and, and could be a contribution to you. And what contribution can you be to all of those different entities, to your hobbies, to your business entities, to different income flows? So, you know, there's particular kinds of people, creative entrepreneurs, and, and we, we thrive when there is actually more on our plate, um, contrary to what a lot of people say, which is like, stick to your focus, find your niche, like, you know, only hone in on one, this, this one thing. It's like, how often does that actually work for people? And, and so again, it's like, don't buy into the lies that may work for other people or whatever they're selling and perpetuating. Because it's like, you know, I don't know about you, but when I have lots of different projects and things in my, in my space and in my world, I feel alive and, and I enjoy the communion and the communication that I have with those things. So the thing is, I would say the second tip is, you know, separate, in order to not separate, you've got to start to recognize that everything is energy. And everything has consciousness, like all, like the chair that we're sitting in, the, the TV, the monitor screen, the cameras, um, you know, from nature, like everything, it's, it's undeniable now, right? Like it's just, it's proven. And now science is trying to figure out like, can I swear? Like, what the fuck? Like, what, like, what is this? Like, what do we do with all of this space? Cause it's actually 99.9999999% space, including us, um, and energy and consciousness. And so with that, it's like, like, take a breath, right? Expand your space and the space that you occupy, right? Expand out greater than what you've ever considered or imagined possible and, and create from that space. And what could you welcome in? What could you receive if you had more space? And if you didn't separate, but you included everything in to your world and if you actually were in communion with all the molecules of consciousness like what could they contribute to you that you haven't actually been open to perceive or receive from so you know a lot of people get like very very trapped in the idea that it's them it's this body it's this mind i have to do everything i have to figure it out and i have to figure it out up here and i have to do it all on my own and i have to and if i bring someone in then they're like this is the person next to me right and then and they are solid and they are fixed and they're in a form and it's like, no, like, are you willing to receive from the earth? Are you willing to receive from the chair that you're sitting in? Like, what if you could make the chair more comfortable? Like, what if you could ask the chair to make itself more comfortable? What if you could ask your book to help contribute to you and your ideas? You know, like your book has a consciousness of its own. So ask it to contribute. You don't have, you are not your book. Does that make sense? So it's like really getting people to recognize that like there are, there is like, Things have a life form of their own um, and, and they are there willing to contribute if you actually start to function from a very different space and place. I really like the way you put it because um, it's a lot more expansive than just 
this is where I get ideas from, this is how they come out, then we need to do this, then we need to do that. So mechanistic, and it's just, it's not true. Yeah, I think that's a really uh, bad trap I've fallen into, We, you know, on the topic of judgment, calling it a bad trap. I think it's a good trap as well, because like from recognizing where you've gone, you know, not excitement found there, I don't even know, can't even get the words out now. <laughs> from from looking at where the, these things have lost their excitement for you along the way, we can see what's no longer resonating with us. And I particularly have found that going into nature and asking the earth or the air around me to give me an idea. Oh my God, like the, um, me and my friend tried this thing, right? Uh, we were both having writer's block, which doesn't exist. Um, we were sitting outside and I said, okay, ask the air to give you an idea and I'll ask it to give me one. And when you breathe in, you're breathing in that new idea. When you breathe out, you're breathing out the writer's block. Came back in, within a few weeks, I had more stuff, yeah, way more stuff written. And and it felt so good because it felt like I was creating all the whole thing, the concept of getting the ideas, the concepts I was writing, and, and all of it felt very expansive. But what the thing that troubles me is that it, we can quick, quick we can quite quickly revert back to that previous state of limitation. Like what what do you think it is that causes that? Um so my tip for this is never to engage with a why question because it, it, we could go into like the hypothesis land of analysis paralysis, which will just actually distract us from like, what can we do to change it? Right? Like, what is it? Can we change it? If so, how? So those are the three questions. What is this? Can I change it? If so, how? Why questions, you know, why does it exist? Why are things like this? Why haven't I gotten it right up until this point? Why can't, you know, why isn't it? None of that actually contributes. It just deteriorates and it just, you know, like distracts. So rather it's like, there's so many different, there, there, I mean, there are, listen to what I'm about to say. There are so many reasons and justifications and it's because people have their reasons and justifications that they have bought into that are limiting them. So the cool thing is that like you, as quickly as you create a limitation, you can actually outcreate the limitation and create something different, but you've got to choose it and you've got to acknowledge that you are the source of your creation, not something else. So, so many people have other sources of creation that they've made greater than them, like technology or social media or money or relationships or, you know, whatever it else. And it's like, those are not the source of creation. You are the source of your creation. So it's like, whatever you are coming up against, it's like, you've got to ask the question, okay, like, what is this? Can I change it? If so, how? And be willing to receive that information and be willing to perceive that it might not match what you've already decided or judged or concluded or computed it needs to be. That's, I think, one of the biggest things that people are not willing to actually uh, see beyond what they, the rightness of their point of view. Mm. So they are trying to defend for and or against, you know, the rightness of their point of view because they believe that that's the right thing. And when you get stuck in that judgment again, like that's what starts to deteriorate and stop the create. Wow. That makes so much sense. I feel so much better about so many things that I've done in the past now. And and like throwing your own justifications at anything, regard like whether it's I'm. Look, I'll be honest with you, Kerry. I didn't even think I was gonna say this. Uh, I've been getting fat recently because I've been neglecting my health. And like over the last couple of weeks, I I knew it the whole time. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the gym later. I'll I'll start running again. And and I was giving a million and one justifications all the time, just throwing it. And then I thought to myself, like, why am I justifying the bad behavior? well, bad. Why am I justifying the behavior that's getting me these results? If I want something different, I have to change it. And then I started adjusting my eating habits again and doing exercise and stuff. And yeah, it, it's like immediate change around instead of being in that disempowering position of, oh, well, you know, that's just the way my mom was like, oh, it's in our family. Don't worry about it. That That's a horrible justification to me. That's the last thing I want to hear is, oh, you're getting fat. Yeah, totally. And and that's it, Sanchez. It's like people don't, they, that's, it's funny. Um, you know, that is operating from 
two things, unconsciousness and anti-consciousness. So unconsciousness is when you're not even aware of the fact that you're spewing out these lies and these beliefs and these points of views that you've bought as true that are not, right? Anti-consciousness is when you know that your body is telling you something or you have an awareness and you choose against it. And whenever you choose against your awareness, it starts to wreak havoc in your life and your business and your whatever. Yeah, so yeah. it's really important for people. And, and awareness is like a whisper. It's the like little tickle that we all just like push to the side or neglect or avoid or ignore because we've decided that like, we have to have an answer and we have to have bells and whistles and you know, this person telling us and strategies and like the, it's like, but that little voice that's actually true for you gets totally pushed to the side when that's the awareness. Like that's, what's actually going to create something greater. You're so right. And you know, even not in business, but um, in, in life, like when we ignore our intuition, um, the thing inside of us that knows the awareness, the, the consciousness that's driving the vessel, like when it's trying to like, you know, hey, listen, like, you know, stay away from that person or don't eat that or whatever it is. Like when we ignore that, I know this firsthand for like the majority of my life, it's like this twisting knot that keeps getting tighter and tighter and tighter until it just snaps. And, and that's when you have the breakdown in the grocery store for no reason and everyone's looking at you and you're like, it shouldn't have made me cry, but it did. <laughs> um, Kerry, you've dropped some serious knowledge on, on me today and I'm really thankful for that. Um, I'm really interested, like how did you get into the, your, your lifestyle? Oh, wow. Um, so how did I get into my life style? Yeah, like what the stuff that you're doing right now. Wow. So I, um, when I was 10, I had, so I'm, I'm originally South African. I was born there, then we immigrated to America, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so we were living here in the States. And when I was 10 years old, I had a near death experience. I drowned. It took two people to resuscitate me. And I came back from that experience, knowing, being, receiving and perceiving that everything is not what it seems like everything is the opposite of what it appears and nothing is the opposite of what it appears. Like there is, everything is energy. Consciousness survives after death. Everything is consciousness. Everything is energy. And so I started to seek more consciousness and try to access the consciousness and the energy that I knew was available um, to all of us. And I, and I then started saying like, okay, well, what else, what else is possible? And I wanted to teach people tools to, to see right beyond what else, what, what we are taught to see. Then I started dabbling in psychedelics, like very shortly thereafter. So I was like 13 tripping my face off like magic mushrooms and, you know, smoking weed, like in the, in the middle of the night with my two best friends, like in the woods, you know, like, again, like, trying to access this consciousness and trying to, you know, get enlightened basically. And then I started to realize, okay, this is not going to be sustainable. Um, you know, I can't do drugs for the rest of my life. And, um, so I was like, okay, I want to go study like with monks and, you know, meditate with them and do yoga like in Nepal or in mountains somewhere. And I was raging against society and the machine and blah, blah, blah. Like I was very angry. Right. I was like, this is like we're being sold a lie and no one else cares. And everyone kept telling me like, Carrie, you're just going through a phase. Like everyone questions the meaning of life. And I was like, no, they don't. This is not a phase. This is like, so then I was like, I need to find my life purpose. And I got very into like all the spiritual metaphysical. I was certified in Reiki when I was 16 years old, magnified healing. I started like activating my Merkaba and my chakras and my blah, blah, blahs and contemplating my navel and mantras and fucking you name it. Like I did it. I went to India. I went to Brazil. Um, this was granted. This was like all, you know, many years later when, cause I made a deal with my parents. They were like, you have to finish high school. <laughs> you have to go to college. You have to get a normal degree. This energy shit is full is like not, it doesn't exist. And I was like, okay, fine. So anyway, like I followed it because I knew that it, I was like, I don't care what you're saying. I will go and do all these things and like all my degrees and finish high school and stuff. And I'm going to go and follow my path. And so that's what I did alongside it all. So long story short is really that um, psychology was too limiting and too boxing and too, you know, like that wasn't it. It was too like mental, you know, mind head trippy. And like research, like it just wasn't, that's not what I knew would get me to what I was after and knew it was possible. 
life coaching started to become a lot closer because questions and asking questions and empowering other people to know what they know and, and blah, 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 blah. Um, and then I actually, so I just, I've studied so much. I did neurolinguistic programming, neurosemantics, um, and then, you know, did sacred geometry, numerology, astrology, chirology. I started learning how to like read people's fingerprints and their palm, like the lines on their hands and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I started studying with Dr. John Martini, and like, he was really like just one of the most phenomenal contributions to opening my eyes up to like how everything is totally interconnected and like all of this stuff is, is there's just some really interesting stuff out there. He's like a proper genius. And then that became very like formulaic for me. And, um, and it's still like, you know, there was some limitations and like heaviness around it for me. It wasn't as fun as I, um, as it was in the, in, in the initial. And then suddenly uh, like one of my best friends texted me one day when I was, um, cause then I'd returned to South Africa at that point and she texted me and she said what would it take and she lives in she lived in australia which is where we had met learning this other integrated healing and life coaching system and we hadn't seen each other and she texted me and she said what would it take for us to talk it's been so long like it's been for, it's been ages what would it take for us to reconnect and i and i was like the strangest question i was like you know like no one really asks you ever like what would it take for us to chat today you know, people are just like, are you available? Like, would you like to connect? You know, they, they don't, they never, it was like a really odd question. So I, I looked at it and I was like, it wouldn't take anything. Like it would just take me phoning you right now, which I did. And that was the beginning of the end of everything that I knew and the beginning of the biggest and greatest adventure of my life so far. And, and how does it get better? And so, um, she told me about these tools, um, and this company called Access Consciousness. And I basically just knew that it was something I, needed to start to explore and so i literally um have been practicing and studying and getting certified and coaching and integrating these tools from access consciousness into my life and business for the last like almost 15 years um and so and it's one of the only things that like has just grown with me and continue to contribute and expand and you know just be such a gift and and nothing else ever did and like, like I can now see how all the even the spirituality you know and the metaphysics that I was involved in and the coaching like how all of it um had some form of limitation built into it um and and so now it's just like amazing because I can see you know where it's like the tools are just so easily woven and and you know integrated into everything that I do and be and you know, are so easy for other people to do the same thing that it just, um, it, it, it really is just such a huge contribution. So that, that's been my journey. I mean, I've literally been and done everything you could possibly imagine, um, under the sun in terms of trying to figure it out. And now it's like, it's not about that at all. It's just a whole new way of being in the world. Um, which is, you know, way more fun. And that's what I'm after. That sounds amazing. And so you, yeah. you've you done stuff that I'm still like really excited about doing later on. Um, one of the things that I always think about is I would love to just live on the, you know, like how you hear about hermits, I think they're called, who like just live on top of mountains. They don't talk to anyone. They don't involve themselves in the world and they just meditate and they eat from the land and stuff. I, I, would that be really fun for you? You know what? I think a while ago... Would you really... Would that, is that really fun for you? A while ago, I would have said, that is my thing. That's that's what I'm going to do. But, you know, lately I've been thinking about, like, isn't that kind of... And I really don't want to offend anyone when I say this, but isn't that kind of bitching out? Like, isn't that kind of taking the easy way out? Say, oh. Separation. It's total separation. Exactly. Because you're, you're literally putting a mountain between yourself and, and the rest of the world and saying, I can't. Totally. And I get it. I so get it too. I so get it because I didn't want to be part of this, the insanity of this reality, right? Like it's fucked up. It's truly like insane. And I was, I was like, I'm out. And I was, and I, and I used to be, I used to have this joke. I still do. I would be like, Scotty, beam me back up. Like you forgot me. Like it, there's a, there's a glitch in the system and I'm still here and you need to beam me back up. And, um, 
and then I realized I had some really, really interesting experiences. Um, and, and thank, thankfully access like gave me the tools to, to deal with it and to really acknowledge what was going on. Um, because firstly, like after all the drugs that I had done, which, I mean, it was, it wasn't like I've, you know, it was really only the psychedelics, but I mean, I used to value them. Right. And I used to, I used to have these experiences where I like on the drugs, I would be like exposed and open to like all of this information. And then what happens with drugs is that like locks it into this particular part of your brain. And then you no longer have access to it again afterwards when you're sober, which makes you, which, which creates this like cycle of like, okay, well I need to go back and get that information. But then, and so, so I was dealing with that. And I was also dealing with all the, like these different beings and these different entities and energies that I had absorbed while on those drugs that you get opened up to. And I, so once I cleared all of that out, it like made the biggest difference in my life. Firstly, secondly, when I started to realize, like when I started to just, to just be me, like when I started to like release all the different energies and entities that were kind of, you know, hanging out with me, um, I started to regain like my total choice of like, I can choose to leave whenever I want. And that doesn't mean like my body needs to die. Like I, the being can choose to leave at any time I want. And any, everyone has that choice. And so when you know you have that choice and that you don't have to kill your body, right? it changes the game totally. Cause it's like, okay, cool. Like who else wants to come in? Like I'm done new being, you know, like you put up a little friend sign and people are doing this unconsciously all the time. As soon as there's like a life change or something that's stressful or overwhelming or some type of trauma or drama, people are not even aware of the fact that they're putting up a little friend sign energetically to be like, I'm out of here. And then other people come in, other beings come in that are like, okay, cool. Like, let's have a body. Let's experience this. And if you're not clearing those original occupants, like it can feel like you are going absolutely nuts and that you're, you know, you've got multiple personalities or whatever, or that you can't ever focus or you can't ever like finish something because literally you've got multiple decision makers, so to speak, who are trying to vie for the attention. And it's like, no one ever teaches people how to deal with these things or that this is even going on. And when I started to like, you know, truly uh, clear all of that and like, just, just like, just be the being that I want to be in this body and like, know that if I want to leave, I can leave at any time. It just, the gratitude that I now operate and function from and with, like to be here, right? To really be here, like, yay, it's so fun. Like, okay, fine. There's this insane reality that exists, but we can create beyond it. And like, what if we are the beings that are here to invite people into what else is possible and to create something so different where there is total joy and ease and glory and like that, you know, like glory is just exuberant abundance. Like what if that is a possibility? What if we're not crazy? Um, and what invitation can we be for people to, to know that they're not crazy, you know, and that they just have never been given the tools um, to, to actually deal with, with being here. That's the thing, though. When you when you say like we are here to invite other people, perhaps to another way of living, and obviously not by preaching or anything, just by living as an example of what we, right? Exactly. This this always comes up for me when I speak with someone who's had similar experience to me, whether it's some kind of trauma, near death experience. What I I well, I used to label it as bad or messed up or whatever. But do you believe that these were necessary to wake us up? So yours happened very young. A lot of other people who have like young trauma happen to them, then they start functioning at a different level. Do you think that it's necessary? Like when we come into the world, we forget what was before because of the trauma of birth and stuff. But then we have like another major event that reminds us because we've got something that we're supposed to do. Yeah, I mean, it's all choice. It's all choice. Mm -hmm. We're all choosing. Consciously, unconsciously, or anti-consciously. We are all choosing all the time. So I know now that, you know, at 10, it was a choice. It was a choice. I remember the question that I asked. I created that whole experience. I've created multiple diseases in my body that I've actually cleared because I chose, I was like, that's it's not fun. That wasn't a cute choice, right? So we, we talk about being cute, not bright. It's like, that was a cute choice, but not my brightest moment. So again, there's like, there's no judgment. It, it wasn't a wrong choice. It wasn't a fucked up choice. It just created so much awareness. And if you're choosing against your, 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 your if you're choosing against your awareness, you're still going to create awareness of what that choice created. 
And so it just depends. Like when you're choosing anti-consciousness and from unconsciousness, it can feel pretty hectic because you're, you're choosing to continuously go against what's true for you. So it's, you know, but when you start to, but that's still choice and it still is giving you the information of like, Hey, do you really, are you enjoying this? Like, would you, so you'd like more of it? Okay, cool. And that's what, that's what people just don't really, um, I would love people to know that they can always choose and change something in their life. They can always choose something different. They, they have infinite choice. Um, and you know, and, and even if like the worst, most horrible, horrendous, vile, volatile, violent thing has ever happened to you, on some level of your being, you chose it because you, could, you knew you could create greater than it and that you could be an invitation for other people. That's, that's something that I used to have a lot of problem um, accepting. And, and like, I used to think, oh, that's, you know, that's us justifying it or, you know, bad people shouldn't be allowed to have that past. I think that's a very mature, not even mature, it's a very responsible thing to do, to take that act, whatever it is, near-death experience, some sort of trauma, and then say, look, that was created by me, and then I can create from it. Whereas a lot of us, me included before, can tend to like push it down, no, it wasn't supposed to happen, let's resist it, and, and ignore it and, and then refuse to create something better, but rather be a victim of circumstance from it. And yeah. this, this, the reality that we live in, it actually perpetuates that, that perspective, really, that looking at what's happened to you as it's bad and all, oh, you know, feel sorry for yourself, watch TV, smoke weed, do whatever, which is what I was doing, you know, playing video games incessantly to escape the reality of what has actually happened and then place yourself in one where, you know, your choices don't mean anything. You are just, you know, floating through this life and whatever happens, happens. It's, it's extremely disempowering, but I really do appreciate your, you sharing your journey with us and your perspective because it's very easy to become disconnected from what's happened to us or the reality we've created unconsciously, I should say, rather than what's happened to us. But what... What can we do to create more awareness around whatever we're doing in our lives? It's a great question. So in order to create more awareness, you've got to keep choosing because, and you've got to keep asking questions, right? Like real questions, not questions that are just conclusions with question marks at the end of it. Like what's wrong with me is not a question, right? That's just a conclusion. Um, so when you actually ask a question, you're opening up to that infinite possibility, that all the infinite possibilities that exist and to that wave function where like there is truly infinite possibility that is available for all of us. And so, um, and you get the awareness of what actually is. So what this also gives you is the, the, the information about like not all people, right, are inherently good and have good intentions. Like, you know, some people are constantly choosing anti-consciousness, like they get off on that. And so if you're asking, if you're not buying into the physical lie of like unconditioned of it, like we are all going to be blah, blah, blah. And you actually are willing to be aware of what is, that can be the, one of the greatest gifts and free you from so much shit in your life. Because it could tell you so much about your relationships, your business, your, you know, the people that you're surrounding yourself with, your own choices. It's like, is this really, you know, contributing to me? Is this person going to, you know, stick to what is, are they going to deliver on what they say? And if you get a no, like if your awareness tells you no, follow it, trust that because that's your awareness. And when you acknowledge your awareness and you trust it, you nurture it and you foster it. And it's like, it's like this muscle that you build and you actually start to create more awareness. Wow. I, I, I think it's such an important tool to be able to, to wield, shall we call it, um, wielding your awareness as though it's like a, a, a sword or like, I just imagine it as like, you know, in the jungle, I've never been and I can't wait to go, but like, in the Peruvian rainforest in the movies, they always show like this massive like vegetation and someone's like hacking away through it. That's like 
I imagine the jungle is is the unconscious behaviors and this machete that we keep sharpening every day is the intuition, the awareness, the conscious decision making. And we've got to like hack through all of the bullshit that that could be in front of us and consciously create that path to go to whatever we want to create. And like in the middle of that jungle, you might find the golden monkey or whatever treasure you're seeking, but it's not about that particular point it's about every single step in between and then getting there is like an added bonus because you know who, who knows what the hell is going to happen um kerry it's been really great speaking with you uh i hope we get to do this again sometime as well i love it this has been such fun and i mean i just want to thank you for you know really creating a space and a place for people to explore consciousness and the, the gift that it can be for them in their lives and so yeah, like totally nama, namaste and just um, keep keep on, keep on. Like may, maybe it's not spoonfuls of consciousness. Maybe it's, but it is. It's like, you know, no one, con, no one ever said that consciousness is going to be like easy, right? But it definitely creates ease, ease when you are being conscious. And sometimes people just require a spoonful of consciousness because that's like all they can, they can handle in that moment. And that is just an acknowledging you, acknowledging that you're meeting people where they're at, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, if you try and give them too much, it's really just gonna not be a, a contribution. It's not gonna be a kindness. And so thank you for, for, for being kind to those people out there that, that require it in their own way. Thank you. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm really still really bad with accepting compliments. But yeah, I appreciate the kind words. And uh, I do this because it's fun. And because I wish someone was uh, feeding me spoons of consciousness when I was younger. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's all it's all in good fun. And it's all good vibes. So thank you so much for joining me, Kerry. Um, if, if someone's got a question for you, where's the best place for them to contact you? Um, so my website's probably the best, Kerry Garnerventer, K-E-R-R-Y-G-A-R-N-E-R-V-E-N-T-E-R.com. Um, I've got loads of free cool training and blog posts and articles on a lot of the things that we actually touched on today. So it could be a, um, a good place to start. Yeah, definitely. All of Kerry's links will be in the description and on the screen. So definitely make sure you're checking those out. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're, uh, you know you can catch the podcast every Wednesday and Saturday, and we'll see you next time. Peace.